What's going on ladies and gents, welcome along to today's video and today I'm here taking out this Honda CMX 1100 Rebel and as you can see Zoe has finally managed to get a day off work and she has joined us today she has taken out the CB1000R and she will be doing a review on that so stay tuned for that coming soon first of all let's start off some stats and some numbers get them out of the way and then we can talk about the bike itself so this is the parallel twin engine 1100 cc's this engine is producing 85.8 brake horsepower and around 98 newton meters of torque what does that mean for the rider it is going to feel pokey in the realms of brake horsepower that is definitely not the most you have got on some of the bikes out there today but newton meters of torque it has got enough to make it a little bit pokey so it definitely keeps it a lively engine Honda have proved with their Africa Twin 1100 with only 100 brake horsepower that you don't need 200 brake to enjoy the ride and that is definitely prevalent to this bike as well it is fairly smooth off the throttle but you definitely can feel the engine braking taking in when you do come off it's not very vibey even if even though it is a parallel twin vibrations through the pegs and through the handlebars ain't bad at all with this bike for 2022 there are only two different color options there's this which is the gray model so a little bit of gray on the tank and then mostly black or if not you can have the bronzy burnt orange style color option to choose from just had a little stint there on the dual carriageway and as to be expected no fairing it means the wind hits you evenly across the chest and the face one last thing to mention with the engine is Honda do have two model variants for the CMX 1100 you've got your standard manual six speed which this is or you can have the six speed DCT so their dual clutch transmission so basically it gets rid of the need for the clutch so you don't get any awkward buffeting while you're going along let's talk about the electronics package that's included on this bike as we come to expect now we've got LEDs all around it does come with ABS it also comes with Honda's selection traction control out of the four rider modes the three that come as standard with their preset settings is standard rain and sport and then the last one being user is the one that we can then customize ourselves so the way to customize it left hand side press select until we get onto user and it starts flashing from there underneath the select button there's a mode button you're going to hold that and then one of the headings will start flashing so at the minute it's flashing on traction control and all you're then going to do is use a select to go up and down so there's three levels of traction one two three you pick what you want once you're happy push mode once you may think a cruiser style bike like this doesn't need it but it does actually come with wheelie control when you go ahead and put the rider mode into rain you're going to get the slowest response in the throttle nice and docile easy to use traction control is then going to be the highest and then also engine braking is going to be the least intrusive and then wheelie control is going to be at the highest when you move into standard power mode then goes to level 2 traction 2 and engine braking 2 finally push up into sport power is full so level 3 traction is down to level 1 and then engine braking is level 2 When you are in the lower gears you definitely can feel the engine braking kick in but when you start getting into three four and above you the engine braking is not as obtrusive you may think like i said a bike like this doesn't need wheelie control but you can get this front end up so to stop the electronics package kicking in on the user go along turn the traction control right down in user you can also turn traction control off completely so there will be no wheelie control and a really nice added feature onto a bike that is designed to do a bit of cruising we've got cruise control on the right hand side so it is a shame honda are still kept with that right hand side for their buttons but what are you gonna do it's there it works so same as the mt10 you have to be in fourth gear to be able to get the cruise control to be activated but whilst in fourth the lowest speed you can go let's have a little look now 
is 26, 27 miles an hour. So you can still set it if you're in a 30 zone, but you do need to be in fourth gear, something to know. And then to activate it, all you're gonna do is push the gray button once with your thumb, and then to the right of that, you've got an up and down selector, push it down to, to set it, and then with the up and down, you can then adjust the speed up and down. To turn off the cruise control, same again, either front or rear brake, twisting the throttle forward slightly or pulling the clutch. All four things will disengage the cruise control for you. So I'm in second gear, and I've got engine braking at level three. And you do notice it as soon as you come on and off the throttle. It does kind of lurch you forward ever so slightly. But if we put it into a rain mode where engine braking is one out of three, there's still a small amount of lurch, but not as much. And you can definitely tell the difference in throttle response when you put it to rain. Really smooth, really nice. You then put it over into sport where throttle response is a three out of three. It definitely picks up a lot quicker. Go to around places like this, the round town, it does handle quite nicely. One thing you do need to be mindful of is the ground clearance. Uh, I did go around a corner earlier and actually catch my foot and then my foot got pulled off the peg. So like with any cruiser that you go on to, you just need to be mindful. We have got this pretty old school digital screen. It's okay, black background, white writing. Isn't the best, isn't the clearest, but it will do. All the information you need is on there. Time, rev, gear indicator, speed, your range, fuel gauge, air temperature, usual stuff. And on the right hand side, that's where you're gonna see your neutral light indicators. For getting onto these back rows and these B rows, it's definitely got a nice amount of poke to it. Obviously it is 1100 cc's. So you don't expect it to be slow. You definitely won't be bored riding this bike, that's for sure. Go on, you can do it. Woo! Look at the mirrors, I can see about 50% behind me. The other half is taken up by my arms. But not many vibrations coming through them. Let's talk about handling of this bike. First of all, as soon as you sit down, you notice it is short. It's got a seat height of 700 millimeters which is pretty tiny i'm beyond flat foot both feet are flat on the ground and then when i can stand up my bum is off the seat so it's really low and you do find you're sat quite deep into the bike so then when the feet are on the pegs my knees feel quite high up it's not the most comfortable position i do find my back is starting to strain a little kind of reaching for the handlebars and especially when I am on the dual carriageway or the motorway I'm getting forced back so then I'm trying to hold on as well so it's not the most comfortable bike to ride talking about the seat I have got a numb bum every time I stand up we get to a traffic lights or something my coxit is hurting but I do find with my Harley Davidson it's exactly the same I think for seats like this you need to get some extra gel placed in because they're just not good enough or i've got a delicate derriere looking at the suspension up front we've got 43 mil cartridge forks then for the rear shock we've got a piggyback style side mounted on the right hand side of the rear of the bike it's okay it's not the best going over some of the harder bumps I have found it kind of sending the shock up through my back so maybe something if I was to get this bike to get the suspension set up properly for my weight the brakes on this are actually really good I feel for the front we've only got a single 330mm free floating disc which a lot of bikes you do have twins so we've got a single at the front and then we've got a single at the rear but actually I've had no complaints from this bike which is nice to see from a more budget friendly bike because this bike only comes in at £9,500 now 10 years ago that is at the top top end of the uh, the Richter scale when it comes to average bikes but nowadays average more expensive average bikes should we say coming in at £15,000 so for something that's hitting under that 10 grand mark, I think it's pretty good. 
Looking at the fuel range for this bike, we are looking around 140 to 150 miles. Uh, the tank doesn't look that big, and that's because it's not. We're only hitting 13.6 litres. So it's definitely not the biggest tank out there. But still, I think really good. Really fuel, fuel econ economical. Get my words out. This bike to me is definitely fuel economical. Just under 14 litres, 150 miles, pretty good. My Aprilia was 19 litres, and that thing I was hitting around 100 miles. <laughs> Take my money. Money, 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 money. As always, videos like this would not be possible without the sponsors of the channel so this bike is a demo bike from Branson's and Yofal so you are ever in the area head on over there they have some fantastic offers on Yamaha, Honda and then used bikes as well this bike isn't a spring chicken coming in at roughly 220 to 230 kilos it is not the lightest bike but where it's got that really low center of gravity low seat height actually you don't feel it too bad and one thing i have found is the slow speed maneuvering really good on this bike pulled into a car park earlier i've had some lunch uh, and maneuvering around that and doing some u-turns no dramas whatsoever nice tight turning circle and then on the dual carriage right after that we had to do some filtering um, and it goes really nicely it's it added in second gear and it's just nice and smooth off the throttle and it just handles as you would expect one thing i have noticed with the engine and the gears is sometimes when i've gone from first to second it's not gone through properly it's gone into neutral okay put it down to user error i've then pulled in the clutch and i've then kicked it into the second gear you've heard and you've felt the engine do its clunk i go to put away and it's still in neutral and that's happened about four times so four times in one day to me that says there's actually some issue inside there different if it was just going into neutral from first to second but it's the fact i can hear the gear changing and it's still in neutral maybe because this is still a brand new bike it's only got 230 miles on the clock it's not at its break-in service that may actually be resolved once the bike's bedded in properly in Zoe's video on the CB1000, she has mentioned how she loves the sound of the engine and exhaust. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot say the same about this bike. The exhaust note is just pathetic. There's nothing there. You just, you want to hear something from the engine. As I've mentioned, you have got the three rider modes that are standard and the user one that you can adjust. Porsche riding out of the power traction and engine braking you can only adjust the traction control and then when you're pulled over stationary then you can adjust all three so I'm not a big fan of all these cables up here it just doesn't look very neat they're just kind of all over the place to be honest I feel like Honda could have tried a little bit more to cover up the, those wires but this is the problem when you do start going into the cheaper realm of the spectrum even a 10 grand isn't cheap there are gonna have to be cutbacks made which is a shame also this doesn't really feel like a cruiser when you're sat on it yeah my legs are quite sprayed apart i don't get that cruiser feel this feels more like a, a retro classic bike that i'm sat on something like the z650 z900 style Mr. Kier up front, he's indicated left to indicate that he wants me to go past. Uh, I'll go past if I want to. I'm clearly waiting for Zoe to catch up. And then he puts his hand up, like he's like, oh, what are you doing? I'll go when I'm going. I'm not up your backside. I'm not annoying you. I'm just sitting here doing the speed limit. And you're getting frustrated because I haven't done what you told me to. In first and second gear, I do find the throttle a little bit snatchy. Uh, when it's in rain, it's definitely not, because obviously the power delivery is lessened. It is lower, but when the power delivery is in two or three, yeah, first and second gear, it's just a little bit, a little bit twitchy, that first 10% or so. 
and then the engine braking can also be quite aggressive even if it's on the lowest one it can still be quite obtrusive you definitely feel it kind of lurch you forward a little bit but I like it the fact they've given you different levels of engine braking to play around with this bike does sit at motorway speeds nicely and like I said it's always handy having that cruise control just like now so you can take off your right hand give it a little bit of a, a shake off and relax it I know Zoe is struggling with a right hand or right wrist because the CB1000 does not have cruise control so save yourself a few grand and get this puppy Honda have kept the handlebars nice and clean on the right hand side we've just got the kill start switch cruise control on and off and then up and down coming on to the left hand side we've got hazards we've got our full beam and our passing light our selector button up and down mode button horn and indicator and that's it nice clean simple not much there but everything works as it should we're back now at Branson's let's do a quick sound test before hand this little beauty back in I always find the key always helps one thing to note is the key is side mounted like old school cruiser like a little bit different bit of a pain to get it in to be honest it is what it is a little bit different Personally, I do think it is lacking in the sound department. Parallel twin, two into one, there's not much there. Previously, I did mention that they had the shower shocks on the side. It is on both sides, so as you can see there, mind the bird poop, on the right and the left. It looks okay in a cruiser style but you just don't get that feel of it being a proper cruiser as mentioned with the modes gonna go through the selector button there you go it's now on user gonna hold mode and it'll start flashing so that's now onto the power remember one being low three being high so it's on one and you can adjust it between them once you're happy Once you're happy, then push the mode button once, it'll go over to the traction. Same again, one, two, three, one being low. For traction control, you can hold it to turn traction control off completely. That would disable wheelie mode as well, or anti-wheelie mode, sorry. Push mode one more time, and then on the engine braking, one being least intrusive, three being most intrusive. Once you're happy, your settings, hold mode button, and then it'll come back out of it. And then that's your user setup for how you like it. As always guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for plenty more videos just like this. And until the next one, ride safe. <laughs> Danny will love that. You'll be surprised to hear, getting a bit of a numbum already. <sighs> Oh. <sighs>